I would like to start us off. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the official podcast. Instead of four international man friends, we've upgraded to five because this week we have a very special guest, Mr. Justin Wang, a very great pal of mine from the internet. Justin, if uh, people out there somehow don't know your name, why don't you tell them what you do and what you've got going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? So, uh, yeah, I'm Justin Wang. I talk about a lot of weird internet stories, uh, some gaming mysteries and shit. Actually, this is probably the most requested podcast for me to be on. It's like, I'd never... I don't think a stream goes by where someone doesn't ask me if I'm going on the official <laughs> podcast. And I'm like, no. I've never been invited. So, you know, I don't want to invite myself in someone else's home, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. that time has come, Justin. Mm. Yeah, that's adorable. <laughs> how, how long have people been requesting for? Months. Months. Wow. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you really should have just barged in at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would always uh, go back and forth with raids with Andrew, too. So I guess there was kind of like that cross pollination. Oh, so there's a bit of playful play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, little cat and mouse. I just oh, got that's... that thing he does when he talks about that. He makes up a story of how he met you when you sent him a raid. Oh, what do you mean make up a story? They uh, are they're all completely true instances. Yeah. Wang. <laughs> are you I telling actually... me you and me didn't share a funnel cake on a Ferris wheel? Come on. My favorite one, though. So one time you sent me a raid. So I'm thinking, all right, I need to do his thing now because his audience knows what I'm doing. My audience had no idea what the fuck I was doing. They, I believe the whole fucking thing. I told the story about how we're driving our motorcycles on the highway and we're like, oh, you're a Twitch streamer. I'm a Twitch streamer, too. And the thing is, <laughs> I stole that story from a Man of War DVD. That's uh, <laughs> there's there's literally a Man of War DVD where they're like, I forgot which guys it was, but they're driving their motorcycles on the highway. And I don't know if this is true or not. They say it was true that one guy is like, hey, you play guitar? Yeah, you play guitar? Yeah, let's make a band. And boom, you got Man of War. That's exactly what happened, though. It's it's pretty good coincidence that what we did was exactly the same as what Man of War did. Yeah, it's pretty. Mm. It's a uh, what's that? Um, there's a phrase for that kind of uh, cosmic uh, shit lining up. Synchronicity. Mm. There you the go. Ah, there you go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that too. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the that's the whole uh, Twitch cat and mouse. I'm sure Tar- Charlie knows a lot about it too. It's like if someone hosts you, you, you should at least make an effort to host them back sometime. Get them back for it. Yeah, absolutely. You get into that too, Charlie? Nope. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> you see, what's weird is uh, <laughs> Twitch. I, I kind of kind of like a boomer when it comes to like knowing how like the inner workings of Twitch recommendations and shit work. So like, I guess like when someone's offline, sometimes if they're not hosting anybody, they'll kind of tell you they'll just recommend channels. And for some reason, Charlie, my channel gets recommended a lot from yours. Like I'll look in my analytics and even... Even though, like, I don't think we've ever interacted on Twitch, it'll just be like, oh, you got this much traffic from your channel. Good shit. Really? Yeah. Have good taste, then. Guess so. <laughs> well, how, how does it determine How does it determine who it should recommend? Do, Takes a guess. Do you do, do the know. same streams? It, it, it prob- analyzes the face, and it looks for similar-looking people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like Fat Charlie, so... <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, no, no, no. You're, the only difference between you and I isn't weight. It's the length of our hair. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Y- you got, like, the perfect, like, rock metal hair. I'm still on my way. Yeah, are you going all the way with it? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. How long do you want no, it? You're actually not- in a band as well, aren't you? Yeah. I'm in a um, new metal band called Jinx. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I don't remember the name of the song, but I saw one of your recent music videos. Yeah, we put it. was very nice. Thanks. Uh, we Actually, the last two videos we put out, we shot them together in the course of two days. Uh, it's kind of funny, actually. So the the first one of those that came out, the uh, I, there's this thing when you're in a band, I guess, where whoever's doing anything for you just assumes that everyone only cares to see the vocalist. Because mm-hmm. I guess a lot of people, that's like how they um, how they consume music. So we're we're shooting the live shoot and I'm getting the impression I'm like you're not getting like any of me on camera. And, <laughs> and so I, t- I talk about this and the guy who's directing the video is like, no, you're fine. You're fine. Let's just keep going. 
we get to it, I'm like, yeah, we're gonna need like a little bit more of me in this video because I'm sending over like this whole like YouTube audience <laughs> that's gonna be fucking furious or like think I'm lying about being in the band or something. And we just we just had no footage, so the whole comment section is just needs more Wang. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, uh -huh. everything could use a little more. You should have shot your own music video at that point. Yeah. Like just vlogged yeah, from the back channel. of the music uh, video. Do that thing when you're making a YouTube video and you forget something, so you're like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna like do this part on my phone." Oh, just like God. cut it in that way. Desperate times and desperate measures. So, mm -hmm. Wag, I know, I know you do a lot of uh, like mystery and sleuthing on your channel. That's uh, what kind of drew me to watch your content. Mm -hmm. The thing I gotta ask on how you do all this shit: How do you deal with the frustration of just things being unsolved or just half finished? Because there's a lot of your shit I've seen where it's just like, and that's as far as this goes. There's been no updates. It, this thing has not been found, or this has never been completed. That's gonna that's be massively frustrating. So when I make a video, I try to think of what kind of narrative the information is going to have, because like people just don't want to necessarily want you to be like, all right, this happened, this happened, and this happened. You need to contextualize it somehow. So sometimes you'll wind up with a story. Like I think the first video I did like that was the secret hard drive one, where it was just kind of like, up oh, here's, so here's as far as the story went. We don't know what's on the hard drive. We don't know if this is real, where it is anymore. Um, and it's. I feel like if the story itself is interesting enough, you can have it not be solved, but it's always better to have it solved. And sometimes you get lucky and it, it will happen later on. Like I notice a lot of the times I'll make a video and it kind of like knocks it loose a little bit and then something happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you can make an update video. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's not all negative there, but um what's this hard drive video that you're talking about i don't have any kind of context yeah. what was on the hard drive so several years ago there was this hard drive that came up on reddit someone uh posted to i think it was ask me anything and mm -hmm. they had said their mother bought a computer bag off of ebay and they found a, it was there was some like kind of like weird hardness in the bag so they're trying to figure out how to get to it like see if there's another compartment nothing so they wind up having to cut a hole in the bag and there's a hard drive inside the hole so they're like mm -hmm. why would someone wind up uh, why would someone put this in the lining of a computer bag like you had to have like unstitched it put it in there and stitch it back up and they they post a picture of the hard drive it's broken they can't read it so people on reddit are all telling them like oh you got to do this and this and that to retrieve the information a guy named jovic comes around and says, I work at a place where we retrieve data. I can do this for you for free. Just send it to me. Mm -hmm. Then what winds up happening is this like this whole back and forth where the kids are supposed to send the hard drive to this guy. He's not getting it. He disappears and they make a whole subreddit devoted to the guy. Is this one of those fake Reddit stories like r slash no sleep bullshit where it's like <laughs> oh, no. 20 different <laughs> updates for a <laughs> shitty fucking fanfic? Oh, see, yeah, I'm but fucking... People... People ask me to do no sleep all the fucking time, and I hate it because it's like they're all fake stories that are written to seem real in a creepy way. And they're written by yeah. fourteen year olds. It's like yeah, really yeah, it's no bad fan fiction. Oh, it's no it's sleep. really bad. No sleep yeah. is so embarrassing to read. Like one of them's, <laughs> I was eating my Cheerios and then my spoon disappeared from my hand. Good Part Lord. nineteen. Final update. Then yeah, there was always <laughs> these campfire stories. Uh, almost written to scare only yeah. children basically oh i heard a noise upstairs and <laughs> yeah. then i went upstairs yeah. but i was alone in the home <laughs> cool <laughs> it's really embarrassing going down in the comments and they've got a rule on that subreddit where you have to pretend that it's all real yeah so there's people <laughs> offering <laughs> advice in the comments oh, like, yeah. oh, really? don't check the closet tonight i i think yeah. i think the monster's back for round two <laughs> shit like that it's so <laughs> okay. fucking embarrassing oh so then it's it's really bad role playing. So yeah, whenever you shit fiction. on that subreddit, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. it, it, well, it's it, yeah, it's it's fa it's fiction where the guy will make up the story and then a bunch of people will try to chime in and act like it's fucking real. It's kind of like a role play more than a fan fiction. It, 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 yeah, it's really a role play. That's I'm all betting, it is. I'm betting you get kids where when they suggest for that channel, they're like, "I read this epic story on no sleep. I swear it's real. This one's totally real. You don't. You'll like, never it, believe it." What I get a lot in that vein is 
stuff that's like very obviously an ARG. Like they'll be mm-hmm. like, oh, I found this channel on YouTube that's posting all these weird, creepy videos with a bunch of numbers and ciphers and codes. Wonder what it could be. Or a bunch or a subreddit with a what's, similar thing. And it's just What's an what's ARG? An alternate reality game, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. that's where that's where you like take a, a game and kind of have it influence into real life, like Halo Two a while back yeah. during their uh, launch bees. trailer. I love yeah. bees, right? Yeah, during Halo 2's original launch trailer, they hit a URL at the bottom of the screen that said like I love bees dot com, and it would take you to a website that like it looked like a regular website for someone who was like, here's some pictures of bees and here's bee facts like from like the nineties. But mm. eventually it would start glitching out and you could find like little passcodes on it and kind of mm. like admin logins and this and that. And eventually it was revealed to be um, an augmented reality game where you 95 percent of these ARGs are basically just pretty clever marketing schemes. Yeah, 100 exactly. percent. Nothing really yeah. more to it. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so it's all yeah. just fun and games and it seems to be everyone is into it. Do you guys think there's actually yeah. somebody <laughs> perusing those subreddits and think it's real? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Ten-year-old children, for sure. Yeah, yeah. children. I, Not I'm even talking ten-year-old about children. Yeah, you, Full ass yeah, adults. Absolutely. Yep. How could anyone possibly believe any of the stories on No Sleep? Have you been on Reddit, Jackson? <laughs> yeah, people, Jesus, like, Jackson. People literally still fall for Onion articles. Of course they're going to believe the fucking fanfics and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's... But the... <laughs> Those enlightened <laughs> redditors, at the, man. At the, core, at the core premise, it's illogical. Why would someone because who's being stalked by a killer demon hop on Reddit Jackson, and post a, a big, story about it? A big part Ugh. of it, a big part of it, is they're gonna read one and they're gonna go, "Oh my God, the same thing happened to me. I had a very similar experience." It's the same reason people believe in ghosts in general. They have something happen that they can't explain, and they're like, "Well, it has to be a ghost. That's it." Mm-hmm. There thing it is. is Thing with Reddit, too, um, like you think, oh, well, why would a person encounter a demon and the first thing they do is run to Reddit and tell them about it? A lot of people, <laughs> like, this, I would. This, this, <laughs> it, and this literally is how they interface with the world, where, I mean, you'll see it in regular-ass subreddits, where people will have some crazy shit happen with their marriage and their family or whatever the fuck, and they just go right to Reddit and tell all the details. So, of course, a demon you know encounters you, hell yeah. You know what? I think I'm going to go out on the limb here and say 99.9% of those like relationship advice threads and such are all exaggerated and made up as well. Oh, that's also I true. think almost yeah, everything no. on Reddit like that is completely yeah. fucking made up. Red- yeah. I don't think Reddit- anyone with actual issues goes on Reddit and asks for advice. I, unless well, they want to shoot themselves Reddit in the feet. Reddit culture is I literally just bolstering and exaggerating and making things much bigger than they are. I'm sure I there's so. genuine couples who go on there to complain because it's not so much about embellishing their story as much as it is. At the end of the day, we all know they're not really asking for advice. They just want to be told they're right. With exactly, yeah. Yeah. The, all points, of those yeah. stories, yeah. all of those, you know, the like, am I the asshole? That subculture, that whole thing is entirely about tell me I'm not the asshole. Even if I pissed on a toddler yep. and beat my mm-hmm. wife, <laughs> am I the asshole? There was one that went, one that went viral recently. Um, this chick on, I think it was, am I the asshole? Um, it, it might not have even been, am I the asshole? It might have been an even less self aware place to post it. But she did some shit where she canceled on a Tinder guy, like, the last minute as a test. That's bitch. Yeah, you saw that one, right? <laughs> what an asshole. Uh, she, yeah, like, she did yeah. it, like, the last minute and, like, presented it as, like, you got to do this to men to make sure that they line up with your lifestyle or whatever the fuck. Yeah, that and was she on Twitter. There for people, that mean? To people <laughs> what does that even mean? No, I, I so know. this was on I, Twitter. I, I, she she posted this herself. This was a screenshot from her Tinder, I guess, her Tinder messages. And yeah, it was something along the lines of her messaging the guy shortly, like an hour before the their first date. Hey, I'm sorry, but I can't make it. And the guy goes, well, what the hell? I planned my whole day around this. Screw this. And then that's the end of the conversation. And she basically posted this along with the message that you need to shit test men like this to see if they're good people or if they're you know gonna throw a fit uh, about something so mundane but a lot of people uh, thought she was being the asshole canceling so late which i agree with 
Yeah, I mean, it was the the way she even presented it. It was, um, I think, the reason she gave him for canceling was her company had a product launch, and that's not something that happens by surprise. Like you don't, you oh, don't, no, really, like, you don't wake up one day. It's like, oh, we have a product now. No, no, that, I, I'm telling you, that's girls call this shit testing. They just mm-hmm. throw something ridiculous at the guy and see how he reacts. It's the same thing how they make. Uh, for example, they'll have one of their friends add their boyfriend and start to get flirty with them just to see how he turns down women or if he'll turn her down. That sort yeah. of nonsense. Oh, yeah. They play these fucking mind games like you have the luxury to be testing people. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there, there is some person. really there's some really lowball shit that women will post on the Internet thinking that they're superior for doing it. Like, yeah. You know, I, I hired a prostitute to message my boyfriend and try to have sex with him just to see that he's a good guy. It's like, that's kind of fucked up. Why would you yeah. be proud of that? I mean, the yeah. solution to that then is to call the cops on your girl for hiring a prostitute. Yeah, there, <laughs> take that. Teach her a yeah. lesson. Soliciting. Yeah. And then start a relationship with the prostitute. Yeah, the only yeah. recourse is hire your own prostitute to flirt with her. <laughs> yeah. Hire just, a prostitute to fuck the prostitute? Have a prostitute war. Just, just don't don't even fuck the prostitute. Just get in a relationship with her and show her yeah. what a good life you're having with this fucking hooker that your girlfriend bought. <laughs> <laughs> Propose to her on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you gotta start hiring private eyes just to like have on retainer just so you know if these kinds of things happen, you're ready. Mm. It's never a bad well, thing to be prepared. Well, speaking, speaking of hiring of, people. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? You see what I did there? Uh-huh. Yeah, how can I hire people, Andrew? Well, speaking Especially of hiring prostitutes. Speaking of hiring people, let's talk about finding freelance talent for your business or project because finding the right fl- freelancer can be time-consuming, frustrating, and expensive. That's why you can go to Fiverr. Fiverr's marketplace helps you get more done with less. Fiverr connects businesses with freelancers who offer hundreds of digital services, including graphic design, copywriting, web programming, film editing, and much, much more. You'll find what you're looking for instantly. You can search by service, deadline, price, reviews, even more than that. This is the website of more things. 24-7 customer service, and you'll know exactly what you're paying for right up front with no negotiations needed. There's quality talent you can rely on. Sellers have worked with some of the most influential brands in the world. And there may even be a celebrity two on, or two on Fiverr slinging their services. Who knows? Take five and check out Fiverr.com. That's F-I-V-E-R-R, two R's. And you'll get 10% off your first order by using code OFFICIAL. So easy. Don't waste any more time and get the service you deserve by going to F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. Code OFFICIAL. Fiverr. It starts here. Justin, what would you look for on Fiverr to hire? Honestly, at the very beginning of my channel, I had a Fiverr logo, and it, it did the job it, I needed it to do. There you Cheap. go. They got it to me in, like, I think they got it to me, like, in in a day. Which is, like, when you when you uh, hire freelance talent, that you can't ask for more than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One day there for a go. whole logo? Yeah. That's pretty fucking snazzy. I mean, it doesn't even have to be, uh, you know, the price range is from cheap to expensive, depending on what you really want. And, you know, all of our audience... You can also sign up there as a freelancer yourself if you have a talent to yeah, sell. You can make money. Too. Yeah, yeah. If you're a voice actor, maybe if you know some graphic design, if you would like to, I don't know, just sell whatever it is that you want to sell. Help people with their homework, maybe give lessons, that sort of stuff. You can sign up there too. Go to Fiverr with two R's and use code official. I've browsed Fiverr every now and then just to check it out, and the amount of things you can find for just $5 is pretty surprising. If you aren't sure if you need something, or maybe you're kind of like, eh, I don't know, just check it out. There's a lot of different things on Mm. there for just 5 bucks. It also has incredible meme potential. Remember, (laughs) uh, was it PewDiePie that used Fiverr for that that, uh, fantastic video? It just goes to show you really can get anything on there. Yeah, Mm -hmm. pretty much. (laughs) <laughs> you can buy your own cancellation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, too. Oh, yeah. Maybe don't do that, yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe just buy a logo. <laughs> yeah, a logo would be pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I, they have great stuff on there. I, I know I saw one category where you can find musicians for nearly any instrument and they'll just play you a riff or a little jingle or something. Mm. That's always nice. Oh, yeah. I've seen uh, a lot of people go, who going like, back. Hmm? Will like just get Fiverr no, beats no. and shit. Fiverr beats? Yeah, like beats off of Fiverr. Yeah, and like, like, like they make entire songs out of it. Yeah. That's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, I dig that. Yeah. Actually, didn't that d- that dude who, um, there was a guy who on YouTube, someone was falsely claiming his video. So then he made a song to copyright claim his own video. And I think he hired Fiverr uh, artists <laughs> to like make his song. <laughs> that he, so he could claim his own video. I'm pretty sure he went on fiber for that. That's great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's that's uh, creative. Oh, man. Go, uh, going back, though, what was on the hard drive? Um, I never got a conclusion. So after I made my video, and before then, there had been, like, a whole subreddit about the guy who um, mm-hmm. he... It was basically... It, it had this whole vibe about it. Like, it was a cult following Dovik, the guy with the hard drive. But it, it had been kind of inactive for a few years. I made the video, the first video, and some people kind of come out of the woodwork. Um, eventually, what winds up happening is the mods verify the original poster of it somehow that like this is like the kid who made the original hard drive post. And it turns out that it was three friends, including the Dovic guy who was supposed to uh, uh, fix the hard drive. They were all middle mm-hmm. school kids who just made up a bullshit story. Uh, oh, well, that, oh, God. God. Yeah. You got that's, no sleep, bitch. Yeah. That's the shit I'm talking about, man. How do yeah. you just not get frustrated with yourself doing this shit for everything? The in- what, who? The, the no, teenage kids? Or so so Rang's it? channel is built, not built around, but has a ton of content about stuff like this. It's like, how do you not just every day yeah. go, oh, and get frustrated and want to quit? Because it's always this bullshit. Just for the reading ending. shitty fan fiction. Just shitty fan <laughs> fiction <laughs> made up stuff and stories that go nowhere. It's so frustrating. It really is frustrating. I remember the first video I made like that was the original hard drive video. And when I got to the end of it, I was kind of like, I didn't know if I could even make this video because I was like, it's because it, it didn't have any kind of anything. We didn't even know it was kids. We just didn't know anything about it. But then I'm like, you know what? Like reality doesn't necessarily have a neat ending uh, like a like a fictional story yeah. would. So like you just got to if I want to tell these stories, I got to tell them the way they are. Do you guys the way those 12 year olds envision them. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the. <laughs> The vault or the safe or whatever that was. That was a Reddish oh, phenomenon yeah, no, for a while. There were a yeah. few of them. I mean, Oh, are you talking about the Geraldo vault? Fuck, I have no <laughs> idea. I don't know the Fort Knox uh, lore of what the safes on Reddit. I just remember <laughs> there was like that one safe they found, I don't know, like in the middle of the forest or Emotep's tomb or something. And they kept posting like updates like, we're going to open it. We're going to open it. They never opened oh, it. That one. There didn't were, um, didn't there it were a go few on of those. for like two years or so. Oh, yeah. Absurd some, they had a subreddit called like What's in the Safe or something. Yeah. Yeah. That eventually became such a common thing on Reddit that they made the whole subreddit for it. Oh, I Jesus. covered one of them, though, that was in a wall in Vegas. And what happened with that one, uh, they they got the like the whole set they needed to open up the wall and safe. It was in a in a Vegas casino that they were renovating and they found it inside the walls. So there's all kinds of theories that it's like mob connected. There might be a dead body in there. There might be a ton of mob money. Who knows? Oh yeah. I'm sure they'd hide a dead body yeah. in the vault. Thank you. Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Just you watch. They finally opened it and it is a dead body. It's all yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Jimmy yeah, Hoffa. Yeah, but then uh, they sell the, all of Reddit yeah. is getting excited to open this up. And then just as they're about to find, they're about to get inside of it and open it up. Oprah buys the rights to open the safe. Oprah, Jesus. Oprah, Are you like serious? literally fucking Oprah. Was she's gonna make Oprah's a redditor? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I mean, That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, she buys the rights, plans to make a whole special, and the special never comes out. And it turns out that what was inside of the safe was like a couple pennies. Ah, yeah. Well, so she could have just Oprah faked it. Special. At that point, at she least recoup have, yeah. your investments. Just fake the contents. 
I guess what what's what's a safe? What's buying the rights to a safe to Oprah? Yeah, just like yeah, fuck it. Fair. Yeah. Well, how much did it cost her? Do you do you have do you know how much it cost? I him? don't know by any chance. I don't think he was allowed to say. Mm. I mean, honestly, I don't think he was allowed to tell us there were pennies inside of it or show us a picture, but he did it anyway. Um, that was mm. nice, at least. Yeah. Yeah. There's another one like that where they open it up and there's a big ass spider inside it. Just hanging oh, out. Oh god, I fucking hate yeah. it. This is so fucking <laughs> lame. Why did they come up with anything good? Yeah, I mean, you know what it is? is it's just real. Boring. Real yeah. life mysteries tend to just not be as exciting as fictional mysteries. But you're writing, you're writing this on fucking Reddit. Make it interesting. Yeah. Don't end it with a fucking spider jumps out yeah. of the vault. I, I, at least I, res- I at least respect them fake. being. Well, no, I don't think the spider thing was fake. I imagine they did open it. And it was empty. You think a redditor is gonna touch a fucking spider, Jackson? The top comments anytime there's an insect is kill it with fire. Oh, oh it's yeah, his house now. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, oh, the, <laughs> the funny comedians the over, of Reddit. Oh, the oh over there's a spider Jackson. in your house. Burn it with gasoline. Ha 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 ha. Never been said. It's like, there's so many variations of that too. Like for some reason on Reddit, anytime anybody variations eats, is generous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, var- it's it's like it's it's a different thing, but the same kind of redditiness. Where if anyone eats anything that isn't like you know plain white bread, it's like oh you're gonna be you're gonna be shitting your pants tonight. Of like if like someone <laughs> yeah. talks about eating like yeah. Taco Bell or something, as if yeah, like, yeah. like what do you I guys can't, eat? I can't get over the spider one because anytime anyone ever mentions an insect, the top comment is always like, like they'll be like, uh, "There's a family of spiders in my house, and I think they're having babies. What do I do?" The top comment will always be, "They own the house now. You need to move." Every oh, single it's time. It's a spider's house now. Exactly. Yeah. Every single fucking <laughs> time. Oh. That's Reddit for you. Yeah. I, I remember oh, Emperor we, we do shit on Reddit too much, I feel like. Yeah, well, we feel like it's getting a bit tired. Because here's the thing it's about Reddit. The, it's, yeah, it's the biggest community there is. There is a lot know, of cool, it's, interesting think things. It's big. Well, well, it's, it's not big, bigger than Facebook. It's massive. Yeah, it's not bigger it than big. Facebook. I think Twitter's probably no. bigger. Is it Twitter might not be. Yeah, but Twitter still is like a lot of redditors too. There's significant yeah. crossover. Oh, dude, Twitter, whereas redditors all are, of them, yeah. They so don't if you want to Facebook. branch out to Twitter real quick, what I've really noticed in the recent years is just the increase of these feminist tweets, which sound like just gender swapped incel rants. Like almost every single tweet sounds like Elliot Roger wrote it, and then somebody just switched the words she to he. Right? I saw one tweet there, which was I think verbatim. I fucking hate men. Hating men to me is not a hobby. I hate men 24-7. Oh, yeah. Fuck oh, men. Oh, I saw that one. The and it had day, like yeah. 500,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. likes. And then underneath, you can tell, you know, I've spent enough years on the internet to know that it's not some tongue-in-cheek, uh, ironic trollery. Like, it, a bunch of angry people. And I always get pushed back when I say female incel. Because there's, you know, always mm. people who say, you know, you know, women cannot be incel, yada, yada. Yeah. And I don't necessarily mean in the literal physical sense these women cannot get laid, but they have that incel mentality, which I think can affect both men and the women, where they just blame all their problems on the opposite sex, because just because they're unfuckable losers. And I've seen just an increase in that on Twitter a lot. I've they always get tens of thousands of likes, if not hundreds of thousands, and the tweets are always the same variation of "men are evil shitbags." It's cool to hate men, though, Kaya. Like, what don't you understand? I so what I don't understand though is it's always kind of funny to me because I like to imagine Elliot Rogers' goofy little duck face as the icon, and I just in my head I do that gender <laughs> swap, and I just imagine like that kid was a fucking loser who wrote a manifesto that we all laughed at, and then he kind of just killed himself. He was a pathetic dork. But honestly, if he just had been born a woman, I guess. But he was just as hateful. He would be. He would have a million Twitter followers, and everybody would be calling him brave. And he would be a king, a queen. Sorry, it's amazing. Yeah, not if he killed people. I well, I don't I, know. I, I'm I not even so sure. He probably wouldn't have gotten to the point though where he felt the compulsion to kill people. Yeah, because uh, he fi- she finally felt accepted. <laughs> she being Elliot Roger as a female in this situation. He probably well, would have been hot if he was a girl. Just the disparity <laughs> is... <laughs> that would have changed the dynamic, too. I'm just saying. 
I, I actually tried I that, mean, Justin. I took his I took his photo, put it into that face app <laughs> thing that turns him into a girl. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I wanted to launch Kai has a new level of dedicated. <laughs> yeah. No, no, hang on. I wanted to do that <laughs> because I wanted to launch a parody Twitter account where I just become a Twitter feminist and all it is is just I would take I would copy incel forum post verbatim and just switch the genders and see how long I can get away with it basically you would be one of the most followed Twitter accounts in a month I bet yeah what's, it's not what's that like name those um, guys <laughs> so there's like Titania McGrath and shit like that oh, I, I think that her. one just yeah she was I think she just like revealed herself on Rogan this past week no she was out the, the, before that yeah it's andrew doyle oh okay cool guy he's interesting okay. that was an interesting interview unfortunately he said that you know it wasn't his choice some journalist in big quotes the word journalist there did her best to unravel the mystery behind this tr fucking parody account on twitter to find out who the mystery man behind her is that's, yeah, that's, that's gonna be like that's gonna characterize the next couple of years just P the press going to war with like jokes and memes on Twitter. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, so, it's like, been that way for a while. You know how you just said gonna, that people be believe. Codified. You know how you said people believe Onion articles. You now yeah. have Snopes fact checking satire sites that they don't like. Shit like that. Oh yeah, it's Jesus. Babylon B. Like they, they yeah, just come on. Added articles literally fact checking them. I, I don't believe that you actually buy the satire. I just think you wanted to be a little vindictive and slap the label uh, on something that you don't like. But I, I really like Titania. Um, another one I like is Jarvis DuPont, I think. It might just be yeah, one of Andrews again. They're very similar. It could be. They are, but the problem is, so <laughs> having tried my hand at a satire account, it's frustrating how almost impossible it is these days to satirize anything because no matter how insane you sound somebody thinks it's real and you can't even blame mm -hmm. them because you look at your timeline and people have there's people who say even more outrageous shit than you do it's i had this free a... satire accounts too and I, I just wrote this post about how i was a you know a, a tweet implying that i'm at the dog park molesting dogs because they can consent <laughs> And I had another post about how, you know, if you molest a two-year-old dog, well, in dog years, that's 14, which is over the age of consent in many countries, right? And people take that as real. I don't know how the fuck to say something that's too outrageous. Did they show you support? It's, it's, so, it's so vast that, the, the, like, the ecosystem on Twitter is so vast that you're always going to find someone who agrees with yeah. you, like, one that's singular true. person, for sure. And they're always going to be vocal about that because they feel like yeah. you accept them by expressing your opinion. That's why I think... So you could you could say anything, Kyron, and you'd probably find the same that, response. That's why I think it's easier when we all harp on Reddit as opposed to other social medias because Reddit has that, like, one culture and that hive mind that the majority stick to. Whereas yeah. Twitter and Facebook and all that, you can always find big groups that'll go along with your views or, you know, oppose each other. <laughs> The thing mm. I'm just saying, you guys are getting dangerously addicted to hating on Reddit. <laughs> the thing about <laughs> Reddit is, it's fun. I, I'm like, what do you mean, you guys? You're <laughs> shitting on no sleep. You came out of nowhere what? against no sleep. It's not just us. That wasn't out of nowhere. So are you and guys? That was a very well formulated argument. No sleep sucks. So I think all <laughs> of us, none of us here really like any of these sites. But are you guys addicted to any of them? Like, I, I, for example, I finally I'm proud to say that I barely ever even open up reddit anymore but whenever i'm on the toilet i wow. just have to browse twitter yeah i'm bad with twitter like yeah. i haven't i don't use reddit that frequently anymore but i realize i'm on twitter like non-stop and it's it's if you follow me it's really yeah. fucking obvious too that i'm on there yeah. non-stop i'm i'm trying desperately to curb social media use and just kind of forcing myself to not use it because i want to I don't know, do other things with my time. Yeah. But I, I will definitely have moments of weakness where I'll just, I don't know, for a whole day, just be on Twitter constantly, just have it open it's all the so time. Unhealthy. The it's, it's so unhealthy. dangerous thing. It's so unhealthy. Go ahead. Extremely, yeah. yeah. The dangerous thing, when you are a content creator or any kind of uh, uh, public facing, any kind of job where you're public facing in that kind of way, you can kind of trick yourself into thinking that, oh, I'm being productive. 
by sitting on Twitter, like dicking around all fucking day. But it's yeah, like, you're oh, doing it's homework. Like, you're just yeah. catching up with the <laughs> news, right? I'm doing research yeah. and I'm growing my platform. But really, it's just like, I tell I'm, myself I'm not doing it because of that. Yeah. Just like an hour before the show. Oh, I'll just find some topics on Twitter and just, I literally, I'm just staring at cat photos. It's, I'm not doing mm -hmm. homework. <laughs> That's like a I'll, healthy uh, use of social media, though, from you, Kaya. When other people say they're addicted to Twitter, it's like reading the shit like men all uh, are he's, evil. He's, he's exaggerating. He was just talking about how he's creating oh. parody accounts to talk about two-year-old dog <laughs> fucking. <problems or whatever. laughs> <laughs> You're calling him healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So he's not just looking at cat photos, and you know that. That sounds so pretty healthy to me, Jackson. How many parody accounts do you have? Yeah, yeah, here's how, it, here's how it works. So here's my pro tip. Instagram to me, uh, for some reason, I don't know, I've never really misused Instagram. I only follow, I follow like 30 accounts and all of them are foster kitten accounts. So my Instagram experience, it's exclusively adorableness. I look at it before I go to sleep. It's just, it's so nice. On Twitter, Charlie, I didn't used to follow any animal accounts, but then I realized, you know, after some points, the whole timeline is just this fucking barrage of bitterness. So I thought, you know what, <laughs> maybe I should sprinkle some cute puppies and kittens in between here, follow some nice accounts to keep myself sane. And it works, kinda. <laughs> Barely if you find yourself it. getting so angry at social media, like Twitter and such, you should uh, just disconnect. There's no fighting it. You just have to leave. See, Kaya... Kai, I have a similar problem to you, and it's my own fucking fault. I follow some good, fun accounts, and they're great, but the comments that are and the replies to them are the most god awful shit on earth. Like, uh, there, there's a couple accounts I've been following. I'm sure you guys have seen them, where it's uh, images that precede legendary events and yeah. disastrous events. I think, and uh, I think they're amusing because it's like you know you don't always understand every reference, but the ones that you do, it's like ah, ah, ah. but man, the replies to every post they make is the worst meme shit on the planet, and I don't know why I read it every time, but I do. Yeah, you know you're gonna get angry, so why do you? I don't know. It's a compulsion by this point. Yeah. I just have to. And well, it's also just to see if maybe it gets better. Let's when you be see honest, something, yeah, at some level, it's entertaining too to get angry at stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Like you do it to yourself, and you know you're doing it to yourself to uh, cause you just want to feel that reaction, but you can't stop sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like exactly. I was, when you talk about the animal videos or the animal pictures, um, like anytime you see some kind of interesting, exotic, cute animal video or something on Twitter, you know the replies are gonna be full of like why this thing that seems cute is actually like the animal dying or some shit. Ooh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. everything's animal abuse. Uh -huh. oh, that's yeah. very that's, that happens more on Reddit than Twitter, thankfully. And on Twitter, you can also thankfully find a whole lot of foreign uh, and cute animal accounts, and usually just people who don't speak the language all that much. And the reactions are almost unanimously the heart emoji, kitten emoji. Yeah. So you, you gotta get lucky with that. Is the know, well actually shit? Is that is that very American? Hmm? I guess. The whole like that, the know. whole well actually thing. Oh, a hundred percent. That's definitely. an American thing. Yeah. Oh my be. god. Yeah. Everyone wanting know. to be like the super intelligent person on the scene while well, analyzing yeah. this dog's body <laughs> language. I, as a pet owner of three, yeah. was able definitely. to deduce that yeah. it's actually suffering. <laughs> this dog that who, that's waggling its tail, slobbering all over his owner, pissing itself in you know joy that he just returned from yeah. the service or whatever. No, they, you can tell that dog was abused. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Judging by the color of the <laughs> most annoying things it, on social the, media are American fucking, based. It's the internet detectives. You know, oh, you, I can tell by the way it does this and the, the owner's body language and how during this time code, 34 seconds in, you can see how the dog moves when the owner does this. That's clear indication of abuse. Now, play close <laughs> attention to the slobber in his mouth. You can notice a small orange tinge to it. Now, I've looked up <laughs> on WebMD what it means. Your dog yep. is suffering from anemia. Yeah, <laughs> just absolute yeah. garbage. The only time where there that's appropriate um, is those dumb cunts that like uh, have vegan cats, where they force their cats oh to be God. vegan. Oh yeah, that's uh, fucked uh, up. That, God, that, that is that's actually animal abuse. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that is a hundred percent. There, in that case, 100%. I completely condone you going in the comments and being like, "Actually, you're a cunt, lady. Kill yourself." <laughs> As uh, th uh, th I've never been angrier than last year. I I saw a page dedicated to posting. Uh, Sphinx cats tattoos oh, like people God. tattoo the skin no. of Sphinx oh, that's cats. That's raging too. Uh, I yeah. own a Sphinx and I've 
lived around sphinxes for a while and I, nothing has made me angry in quite a while because they put they put them under well i assume most of the time they put them under if there's they're doing n- it while yeah. they're awake that's even worse there's no, there's no way, way a cat's gonna, that. there's no way a cat's gonna let you stab needles into it for an hour <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well regardless they put them under and then tattoo them or like these weird russian tribal uh what do you call them like patterns all over the sphinx it, it's disturbing oh god <laughs> Well, and then and then then the comments on them and such are always like, "Oh, that's so cool! I wish I had a sphinx so I could do that." It, uh, it really annoys me. It makes me angry just thinking about it. Well, that made me sick to my stomach, but I know that a nice home cooked meal can help turn that around. Isn't that right, guys? <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Yes. Blue apron. That's Fuck right. Yes. Blue Apron is back, everybody. Health is mm. personal. But no matter what it looks like, it should taste good. And that's why Blue Apron wants to help you create a mealtime routine that works for you. One that's not centered around fads or diets, but an enjoyable long-term approach to eating. You know, um, Valentine's Day is coming up. Should be a day after this is released. Oh, that's true. Yeah, a day or two after. So you might want to sign up real fast, order some food. Make the food for your significant other and make them happy. I think that would be the perfect opportunity to get into learning how to make dinner as well. You're not really risking anything either because these recipes are designed to be very easy to make. They're easy to learn, easy to make. You get all the recipes in just the right uh, proportions. I keep cutting you off. I'm realizing. I'm sorry. No, I'm trying to interrupt. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Um, It's not even to say anything important, but... Uh, the vast majority of our listeners, as we've seen from the analytics, is men. And men, listen, Kai's got a great point with Valentine's Day. Women love when a man cooks. They love a man mm-hmm. who cooks. It is such a good thing to do. Trust me. And Blue Apron makes it easy as hell. Yeah, uh, You can keep going if you want. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you for that. Well, I, I just think Blue Apron is a really nice way to get started with learning to cook, just experimenting with food. I mean, it's, you know, you, you get sent a different dish constantly, nearly, you know, it, it, they switch up the variety on a regular basis. You get to learn. I've been experimenting recently with trying to make my own hot sauce, as you guys know. Not very successful so far, but I can attest to the fact that learning to cook and just experimenting is fun. And if you don't want to experiment just yet if you need the training wheels well blue aprons um recipes are easy to make again they came out they come with like what a 40 minute guarantee or something where they say hey even if you're a complete dummy here's all the ingredients as long as you don't set your own foot on fire you can make a meal easily um again would be a good time and i i promise your girlfriend is going to be very happy if you now go to blueapron.com slash official for 60 dollars off when you visit and you can make let's see what's on the menu in february you could make her some seared steaks and roasted broccoli what do you guys have uh mushroom and kale gnocchi that looks pretty good Mm. spicy chicken stir fry I was going to do the the gnocchi, but we'll go with the Moroccan-style vegetable chili. Ah, vegetarian options, I see. There's a lot of delicious options here at Blue Apron. There really is. They do have a lot of options, so, you know, unlike cats, humans, if you want to, if you're an adult making the decision for yourself, you want to be a vegetarian, Blue Apron has vegetarian options for you. They have vegetarian recipes, they have low-carb recipes, they have Mediterranean, diabetes-friendly, World um, Weight Watchers approved... You have a lot of options here, so you know you uh, you don't have to eat things you don't want to eat. So if you want to eat, I don't even know what this is: za'atar chicken and farro. Worth a try, I'm mm. sure. Describe it to me, Kaya. Farro Describe is what, it's what pretty good. Like? I've had that before. It looks tasty. <laughs> oh, Wang, would you like to describe yeah. it? Yeah, it's uh, it's some kind of grain thing, right? I don't know exactly what it is. That's like it, lo- it looks like rice, but it's got these little like pebbly things in it, right? It's, pebble doesn't sound appetizing, but it's good. <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, I guarantee it's way more delicious than I made it sound. <laughs> okay, Blue Apron meals yeah. do not come Blue Apron pebbles. does not send pebbles. <laughs> we swear all the products oh, are edible. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Sorry for ruining that brilliant ad read right there. <laughs> no, you just made the yeah, ad read. That's fine. 
And then there's also Parmesan, almond, baked cod, and Spanish spiced salmon and vegetable quinoa. So come on, give it a try. It's blueapron.com slash official for Wait, 60 Wait, what did you just off. say? Blueapron.com slash official. How do you pronounce that? Uh, which, which part? <laughs> Blueapron.com slash official? Quinoa? Quinoa. It's quinoa. Quinoa. What? Qu- quinoa. 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 What? Now you're quinoa confusing me. Is how it's, pronounced. It's, it's quinoa. It's quinoa. 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 You're, you're like putting way too United. much of an emphasis on the e uh, on the i. That's how it's pronounced, though. It yeah. is quinoa. Really? It's, que- it's yeah. quinoa. It's not. It's pronounced the yeah. way it doesn't look. Okay. Like you're pronouncing so, it the way it looks, but it's quinoa. Yeah, quinoa. <laughs> quinoa is right, and then I've heard quinoa a lot. But Kaya, you said like quinina. Like, what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Crimea. It was enough to Crimea. Quinoa. Crimea. Anyway, I said blueapron.com uh, slash official for no, 60 bucks off. <laughs> Don't try to hide it. I did. Blue Apron, feed your soul. Blueapron.com slash official. Embrace whole ingredients. Eat with all your senses. So staying on topic about wooing women and heartless heritance, Jackson, I know you wanted to talk about Amber Heard. Mm. Oh yeah, I did. Oh. Well, I don't know all too much about it, but I heard the the, the um. <laughs> well, I I, you I had just so long in for to the, prepare. You were so excited. You're like, I we need to talk about Amber Heard, and now you come in here yeah, saying you don't know anything she, about it. She's lying to us because she, <laughs> did you guys hear the uh, recording? Oh yeah, it's oh, fucking infuriating. Remember, remember when the internet uh, canceled Johnny Depp because they thought. He abused Amber. I want to make it clear That's the context behind it. Just to, I'd like to set this record straight. When that cancellation wave hit Johnny Depp, I said nothing because I knew Amber Heard's past. I knew that there was something fishy. I've learned my lesson. Well, why didn't you speak up, you son so, of a bitch? Well, Johnny Depp's not going to commit suicide. You could have helped. helped. Jesus. Hang on, back mm. back out a bit and give like a give a context for all. Okay, of so this. Johnny Depp's an actor, Andrew. <laughs> not that far. You might know no, him from no, Pirates that, of the Caribbean. Not that far. Tell it to someone like me, who I legitimately have no idea who Amber Heard is. Back in 2016, uh, well, he's, he's girlfriend. His girlfriend yeah. came out and basically accused him of abusing her physically and emotionally and then the past five uh, four years have been this me too horse shit canceled johnny depp and i think he mm-hmm. lost a couple of jobs i think he lost a couple of movie gigs lost, because of the shit were, he lost jack sparrow wow yeah like yeah. disney denied that that's the reason they got rid of him but i mean it's very plain to see the timeline there that no, that's really the only thing that were, kept those alive the last couple of movies yeah. weren't that great to begin with but anyway, you know, there yeah. were days where you would go on Twitter and the internet would be aflame because how dare you? How dare you? Like Greta Thunberg, like how dare you put him into Amazing Beast or Fantastical Beast or whatever the fuck that Harry Potter movie is where he plays the villain. They were really mm-hmm. angry at that movie, uh, the directors or whoever is running the gig uh, for not firing him because of a Twitter ha- hashtag mm-hmm. meltdown. So Amber Heard, as far as I know, she's also in some symbolic domestic abuse ambassador position from some organization i guess so Mm -hmm. she's out there you know talking about how uh, domestically uh, she was abused and such and then every couple of uh, years i guess a video would come out or a voice recording of them just yelling at each other and bickering and then slowly photos emerged of johnny depp with like the tip of his finger cut off sniveling on the audio and people went oh well shit Maybe he's the one who's getting abused. So that's basically wow. the story, Andrew. So Charlie had mentioned he knew Amber's past. What is that? She had a history of like impulsive, bad decision making stuff, a very short temper. It's been a little while since I've dug into it, but like in early on in her career, she had like these outbursts and like she's very aggressive. So. She's- Sorry, and given Johnny ahead. Depp's like a- Johnny Depp's been in like 50 public relationships <laughs> and he's never once had anyone step forward be like Johnny Depp is an abusive asshole or a bad man or anything. And anytime you even hear from Johnny Depp, he sounds like he's overdosing on Xanax in the first place. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he sounds perpetually just Sad. out of yeah, it. Yeah. It sounds like he's going to fall asleep within the next five seconds. Exactly. Like so it's really in, hard to believe that he could even muster enough cur- or enough strength to like throw any hands or anything. He even sounds the way and they were recordings is, together. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Like every wow. one of his friends apparently knew about this because back when this first came out, back in 2016, one of his good friends, Doc Stanhope, wrote an article on his own website uh, about how he can no longer stay silent. And he actually stood up for um, Johnny Depp saying that, you know, literally everyone in his private life, in his vicinity, all of his friends, we knew that he was getting abused by this bitch, that she was a terrible influence o- on him. But none of us had the balls to just say it to him and say it to his face. And especially no one has the balls to uh, defend him publicly. Which fucking sucks. I mean, imagine if all your friends know the truth, what a yeah. uh, what a manipulative psycho you're dating, and they just they cannot well, they defend you publicly. they don't sound like very good friends to me. I agree. Yeah, it's it's hard. Really, they don't. Like, that's really shitty. It, when you, when yeah. you know and someone that, that's, that's in a relationship that, that it's like they're like still stoked on it, and they're being abused, it's hard to get them to see reason. But like once oh, they, yeah, they eventually absolutely. come around... Oh, thankfully a lot of the time well, when, but when he's then like when he's the one being accused of uh, abuse i yeah. feel like that's when that, he would come exactly. it's still wild that amber heard has that like against abuse position because i looked it up because i was trying to remember mm. what it was she was arrested in 2009 for beating her girlfriend at the time and oh yet she God. still got the position so no, even without the all fuck. the johnny Depp it's shit. really it's odd because when you listen to the tape the most recent one Mm-hmm. They they have this mm. bickering at the beginning where Johnny Depp says, do "You know, uh, sorry." She says, "Do you really think anyone's going to believe you that I was a threat to you? You are a man. You are much bigger than me." Yada yada. And he says, "That doesn't matter. You still abused me." And she says, "You know, no. Uh, okay, so you, Johnny Depp, you're going to go out there and say that you were scared of me, really, Johnny? Who's gonna believe that?" It's I sort of paraphrasing there. But you can tell that this is a person who thinks that this, the, how much pain you inflict somehow is proportional to whether or not it's abuse. You know, I think we can all agree if a girl slaps you, it's not a fucking life-threatening extinction-level event, but it's still abusive if it's an ongoing yeah. thing in a relationship, right? And she doesn't seem to agree with that. She doesn't seem to agree that if your girlfriend constantly is just smacking you around, even if it doesn't hurt or leave scars... You're still no, her girlfriend. argument was that she didn't close her fist, so it's not abuse. Here's the exact quote from her. I, I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. So apparently there's a difference in Amber Heard. It's also, like, was she, she the one that recorded it, was he? Because I could see... She rec- it has to be. Yeah, no, no, right? no, 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 no. It was, uh, if I remember Wait, correctly, it was her? I'm pretty sure... She's that fucking yeah, bold she, that, like, she... she was. No, Kai, I'm pretty sure because uh, in one of the the articles I read, it was her, it was her, well, maybe not that one, but it was her that was recording conversations for the the previous ones. Yes. The for lawyer. I'm talking about the most recent one. You can tell it's Johnny recording themselves on the phone because his voice sounds better than hers. Hers sounds, you know, fucked up because of the phone thing. But she does say. Okay. I looked it up now too. Go and tell the world that I, Johnny Depp, am a victim of domestic violence and see how many people believe you. Trying to make the points that, you know, if you're a man getting slapped, it's not a big deal. That's so fucked. And you know what? If Which it was is, just it, her word against his with no receipts or anything, that's exactly what would have fucking happened. Which is it, it what happened happen. in 2016. <laughs> it did, it did happen. happen. Yeah. It did that happen. was the most yeah. damaging thing ever, this whole Me Too shit, where at the beginning we got all the actual culprits like Weinstein, who who's an actual rapist who forced women, who forced himself uh, and penetratively fucked women. And then it kind of just snowballed from that into when you have a bad date now, it's rape. You guys remember yeah. that Reza Aslan bit? I don't uh, like yeah. him. I, I don't like that fucker. Yeah, I think yeah. he's a schmuck but there was this fucking article that basically just it was written by this jilted vindictive woman uh, talking about how little his dick was like how she twice sucked him off went home happily was this, and then was this the one yeah wait was was this the one where she complained about the the wine choice yes. that he gave her i think so yeah oh i think God. that's the one Literally, he invited yeah. me to his house. I sucked him off twice because he nicely asked me to. But then when I left, I kind of felt shameful. Yeah, that's not right. That sounds like the Aziz one. <laughs> that's the that's the one. That, that, that is the Aziz one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was. Aziz I think Asari. that one was yeah. the tipping oh, point. Sorry, from Parks and Rec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Aziz. I'm sorry, I confused him with Reza Aslan for some reason. That was that. That guy? was. 
And then there was another Definitely. one, and I'm blanking on that name, but it was a, another Hollywood actor who said, uh, you know, some woman accused him of rape because they were in a car on a date and she gave him a blowjob and then they parted ways and that was rape. I don't, I don't remember, remember this one. one. Yeah, I'm forgetting the name. The point is, it just, you know, when your wine choice is the most traumatizing thing about your rape, it wasn't rape. Also, back to Amber Heard, it's not just she would throw punches and hit Johnny Depp. She would throw, like, vases and plates and, like, she went, like, full Looney. Harry's 70s fingers, yeah, she right? went, like, full Looney to and she'd, like, break plates over him and shit like that. Poor Johnny Depp. Yeah. I'm surprised yeah. she didn't, like, bonk him with frying pans. There's a... To be fair, <laughs> I just, I, I want to throw, I want to throw this out there real quick. In the original, when she, when she went public with her version of the events in 2016, she did post or she put into evidence pictures of her abuse, right? There, there was photographic evidence of, like, her hair torn out and bruises on her face, which could have come from anywhere f for sure, but there was, like, yeah. photo evidence, correct? I don't recall. The one I remember is her toes. She, I don't remember what she said about them, but like her toes were injured because of Johnny Depp defending himself from one of the plates she threw, hit her foot and bruised it or something. <laughs> That's why in the recording he asks, how are your toes? I've seen a few people too. Um, I don't know if it's like a lot of people, but the past few days, even after that last Johnny Depp recording came out, trying to like and now i guess because it's so like the evidence is so plain to see what happened here that now people are trying to spin it like oh well they're both in the wrong it's like like oh, no yeah. you don't get to find that middle ground now like there's like <laughs> there's a guy gets his fucking finger severed and is defending himself fuck that yeah i saw that too on uh, i think it was entertainment tonight when they ran the Amber Heard story initially, they just went full in on Johnny Depp. And now that this came out, the fucking host, this dude, and then the girl were like, well, we don't know all the facts. We can't really pry into their social mm -hmm. lives here. You it, weren't saying that back then. Yeah, mm -hmm. It yeah, really exactly. is up for debate. It seems like it's just an unhealthy relationship that, you know, it's, pr it's probably oh, better absolutely. off separated. Yeah. But we don't know who's really in the wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> Could be anyone. So did he win his case now? I knew, I, I know he sued her for 50 million. I hope I he certainly wins. Hope Defamation. So. Mm. Yeah. I hope she also loses her role in Aquaman. Apparently she has, actually, as mm. of today. I was really? As of today? This. Yeah. Where did you hear that? We'll see. I just Googled this whole thing because I wasn't, I didn't know a lot of the context. I mean, if there's any doubt left in your mind, this is a direct quote from the video from her saying, I can't promise you I won't get physical <laughs> yeah. again. God, I fucking <laughs> sometimes get so mad I lose it. It's directly from her. Wow. What a piece of shit. What See, an actual yeah. shitty human being. Holy fuck. <laughs> Meanwhile, fucking Johnny Depp's comatose in the corner can't even get a sentence out in the order recording. It sounds like he's passed out. This is your <laughs> fault, Johnny. At him. If you're listening, it's your fault. It's literally just an abusive wife beater's sentence. It's like, sometimes you make me so mad, baby. You know, I love you, but you know, when I come home and meal ain't done, you know, I just lose it, baby. It ain't because it ain't I don't love you, but she's just cowering in the corner with a black eye. And then later when the police comes, it's like, no, I ran into a door. That's he pretty much how it went, man. Yeah, fuck all those people, man. John, I'd be so goddamn. pissed if I was Johnny Depp with my fucking friends. Because he would text his friends like, I need your help, come help me. Yeah. And then they'd, they'd like, come save him, and then they never spoke up when he got fucking blasted. Yeah, that's fucking so bullshit. So that's why... That's that, like, they stupid. knew and did nothing. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's, that's why frustrating I... frustrating as shit. You know, I... I don't know, back in 2016, when I read that blog post by Doc Stanhope, that kind of stuck with me as a... Yeah, you know, knowing what a friend is, because one of the paragraphs was something along the lines of, you know, I thought a lot about whether or not I want to publicly stand up for Depp because I don't want to look like a psychophant. I don't want to look like someone who's just sucking up to his rich and famous friend. But then I realized that if I'm a good friend, it doesn't matter what anyone calls me. Even if I look like a suck up, I'm going to stand up for him. And that's just that's a good friend right there. Uh, if yeah. if you're if you're knowingly in a position where you've seen the abuse firsthand, you, I, I I can't understand how you 
couldn't speak up in that position. I just feel like half these people aren't human anymore. Like, they know that shit's <laughs> happening, but from a PR perspective, it's like, you know... It's all business. Yeah, I'm going point. against the grain. It's going to ruin no. my image, and maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe yeah, I don't like, know everything. Like, the, when the Harvey Weinstein shit happened... All these motherfuckers oh, yeah. knew about it, but then after, like, this, we're talking like decades of this show going on, and then after it's okay to criticize them, everyone goes mm-hmm. out there and acts like oh, fucking heroes sure. about it. I hate, yeah, yeah, I hate just that. when there's a benefit to you. Yeah. That's I hate when that you mentality where it's it. like, you know what? I, I've been silent for too long, and I feel like now's the right time. I don't care what it does to my career, even though it's like you're so brave. Yeah. Even though it's, it's like a, you should have said it ten time. years ago, you fuck with. And they did that thing where they all <laughs> wore black in like in solidarity oh. or some shit like that. I think it was some shit like that at the Golden Globes. Right, you you allowed this rape and pedophilia in some cases to happen. I mean, they were all buddy buddy with Jeffrey Epstein and such too, and it just it went into this complete overcorrection to oh no, we we don't condone Weinsteinism and shit to. You know, we went from nobody, everyone turning a blind eye to the abuse and rape of women to everyone acting as a flying horse suddenly don't exist anymore. They all magically Mm -hmm. evaporated and every woman tells the truth 100% of the time, every single, in every single case. Maybe there's a middle ground. Maybe you got to give Johnny Depp his due day in court, due process. All of a sudden, throw him in jail. Uh, yeah, how about I think it's gonna, it's, it's just going to swing down. back to the extremes and then it'll be like no one's going to fucking believe anybody because everyone just gets so exhausted with like the bullshit stories. That's not true. I think it's the opposite. There's, everyone's still going to believe everything. And now yeah. even more so now that the other side turned out to be right. They're going to believe anything that makes them angry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. L- whatever makes someone angry is the shit they're going to believe. Yeah. I, I see... I mean, it's probably a part of it is like me, like kind of uh, self-selecting the kinds of people I follow and shit like that. But I feel like I do see a lot more skepticism to claims the past maybe like year or so than in prior years. Yeah, maybe. Mm. I don't know. I don't know where this is headed, to be honest. I would like to think that's the case. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's definitely, like, some amount of selection bias. I'm sure if, like, we went out into, like, the streets and just asked random people, it would be a different story. Yeah, I'm curious as to what, like, the public opinion would be on Johnny Depp at the moment, if if it's even made an impact on if oh, people... Oh, man, yeah. Jackson. Like, the general public still Jackson, you know what? Uh, you know what pisses me off in that vein that I see sometimes that I can't fucking stand? It's the people where when this kind of shit comes out, like, so Johnny Depp gets these accusations and everyone goes, he's a piece of shit. He's, you know, fucking with his girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. And then later they go, nope, here's the evidence showing that's not true. And, you know, here's claims that that didn't actually happen and that there were lies. The people who go, oh, I don't care. He's an abusive piece of shit. I'm not going to oh, look at that. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I, I've yeah. been convinced. My mind is made up. No evidence you show me now will change my mind. Oh, that is the most frustrating shit. Anytime, like, the cancel culture is wrong... And then there's, like, this huge, like, splinter cell of people that are like, doesn't matter, I don't need to see the evidence, I don't look at evidence from wife beaters. I the fu- know the, the way they talk is so awful, too, because there's, like, they just go, like, uh, nah, you're a womanizing piece of shit. It's mm. like, wow, great, what a constructive retort. You really made your case. Yeah. How Good very informed. What an Lightning. insult. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. God. I, I hate that. See, uh, those are the regular yeah. Twitter replies that just send me into a fucking just yeah. eye roll is yikes. Big oof. Gotta, not do not a good take. You can do better. Dude, yeah. This ain't it, Chief. <laughs> this ain't it, oh, Chief. Man. Oh, God. Dude, you fucking homo. Wow. Just stop. You really thought Slug you was doing off. something. <laughs> oh, yeah. You really thought you were doing something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then there's also the, the uh, ubiquitous bruh. No, like, then there's uh, that, that one. one doesn't uh, even mean anything. The one meme uh, they all use the same meme is the best time to delete this tweet was yesterday or some shit like that. The second best time is now. <sighs> yeah, delete well, this. Let's, oh, let's call. Yeah, let's call Charlie's shit. favorite up to the stand. You're clowning. Stop clowning. Look at these oh, clowns. Yeah. They just here's your clown card. Oh God, it's so <laughs> fucking what is this evidence? Hey, you dropped your clown suit. <laughs> oh boy, it, it's always photos where they think they're so clever. They go, Hey, I I think I saw you at the supermarket the other day. Was this you? And it's just a stock photo of a clown. Like, wow, what a great joke! No one's told. 
It's Holy crazy. Shit. I feel like on Twitter, that kind of format where it will just last way longer than any kind of meme does in terms of people like not caring that it's fucking stale. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think it, I think it's what I said before on that, where it's the splintered nature of Twitter, how like other social media platforms yeah. you have kind of groups and collectives where Twitter's just like, hey, your feed is your feed, whatever. Yeah, you, you know go. what it is? I guess, you know, like when you put it in that perspective, memes will just die out at different rates for different splinters of Twitter. And that's how you wind that's up with that. Point. That's a good point. Yikes. I think we can all yeah, agree, that's, though, that's cringe, bro. That all the bronies have died. That's something I thought about recently. I haven't seen a brony since 2012. No, they're just in hiding. They're waiting for their time. I miss them. Bronies were like the most innocent group of people that come in <laughs> <laughs> like, they, didn't, they didn't hurt anyone no. they really didn't hurt anyone it no, depends what on the brony what, yeah what you're forgetting to think about is that all of these weird subcultures in a Venn diagram they all kind of overlap like petals of a flower like I, uh, most no, bronies, bronies are probably just like into ponies, adult man. baby That's diaper shit who are probably into MAP shit no mm. well maybe it's so weird yes, that it, to think about it like it became a culture at all just like yeah. all like yeah. like they would have conventions and lots of people would show up and it would just be like all these 30 year old dudes united around this one children's cartoon that like was it even that good? I never I never watched <gasps> an episode of it, but like that's a bit of a hot take. Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. it you good? Know what? Was it that good? Now we know what we're doing <laughs> after the show. You're going to sit down and watch yeah. it with us. And yeah, well, yeah, you know. That uh, cartoon kind of disproved that. It. I don't know. I had this theory that anime was some sort of a Japanese plot to masculate Western men and destroy our civilization. And, you mm -hmm. know, maybe there's something in the art style, like the angles of the lines sending subliminal messages that lower your testosterone levels or something. But then you look at, you know, My Little Pony and Steven Universe and you realize, oh, never mind. It's just something about those cartoons, though. They attract these weirdos. Yeah. Like nothing else does. Like moths to a flame. I think they just liked ponies, to be honest. Oh, that's even more I don't think that's upsetting. what it is at all, Jackson. What do you think it is? I think there's a lot going on. It, it, I could go all day about what makes a brony tick, Jackson. Yeah, it's different <laughs> for every Please. case. <laughs> Take the stage, Charlie. Give us your presentation. Where's your years of research come to? You're not ready for the truth. <laughs> you can't I think they just want to fuck ponies I think that's obvious There's a good chunk that's that But there's chunks that don't Part of it is also counterculture My Little Pony comes out and people get to say I'm a big buff man who likes this girls cartoon What do you say about yeah. that, huh? Well, let's, they, not, they, let's not go too far There were no buff men uh, in, the uh, well, I mean, in, fat, in their minds but, yeah. In their minds yeah. they were big buff men Watching Maybe. a girls cartoon there's still like, you know what it is, that kind of an irony, I can see why it would appeal to someone. Uh, but it's, it's just like, I guess, you know what it is, though, there probably were like the, um, like the, the original bronies who kind of seeded the idea, and then people were like, oh, I like what that guy's doing, let's all fucking be like this. Yeah. That's definitely Maybe. There's a lot of factors at play. Yeah. I, I think that you can pick out a ton of obvious stuff. And then just saying they probably liked pony pussy. Oh, well, so they saying. definitely have. Did you read that write up of that guy when the show was still popular about his justification for why he fucking the ponies and wanting to fuck the ponies is fine? He, no. he literally broke down the show's art style and he wrote down this whole dissertation like, here's all the reasons wanting to fuck Twilight Sparkles is, is fine and makes sense. Number no, one, that's facial saying. symmetry. That's oh, what I'm geez. saying. I think all of these <laughs> yeah, subcultures. Yeah, it was a whole fucking like thesis <laughs> statement. It's, it's weird right. though, because like there's a lot of there's yeah. a lot of people who want to fuck a lot of things, but they don't usually turn into a subculture like bronies. Mm. No, well, it they also do. became a they meme were... and spiraled out of its hands. Yeah. It you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reached critical mass appeal. It turns to, into like, a talk subculture, about and yeah. it kind of gave them a bit of power. Justin, these days it turns into a subculture because no matter what you want to fuck, you can go on the internet and find twenty other people who want to fuck the same thing, and now you can exchange Hell numbers. Yeah, you yeah, but those cultures aren't ever really brought into the public eye. Like, bro, not if I like... have something to say about it. <laughs> I love <laughs> those cultures. I think they're amazingly interesting. I've been oh, yeah. I like, I like rally around on. wanting to fuck. 
fucking one of my favorites right now that I've been diving into is people who want to fuck uh, robots. It's just so fascinating. Like there's arguments over. No, make the robot look human. No, there's no point to that. Make them look more boxy and angular. <laughs> it's so great. I love that shit. I think it's amazingly fascinating how heated people get over porn. <laughs> That's something I've been considering making a series about just like weird, like Internet based paraphilias. Like I oh, would love baby. to do like a Vor episode that like you guys know what Vor is. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, it's just like it's that that's something that to me like it, it it the concept of it only becomes as widespread as it is because you have the Internet. Like if you're yeah. uh, like a primitive man in a tribe thousands <laughs> of years ago, it doesn't occur to you that it might be sexy to get swallowed whole and digested. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think of that. He doesn't want to fuck cartoon ponies. even exist. I wonder Maybe if fetishes much, even existed before the pr- internet. Probably much tamer no, fetishes, well, like the easy ones, like feet probably existed in piss. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, but I doubt that the yeah, elaborate yeah. ones, like I want to fuck a ghost that lives in my own body, existed <laughs> or any of that. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Shit, you know, I don't think that shit was on the table yet. You know like, what it is? It's like you have mates. this carousel of, of yeah. just stuff being presented to you that would like you normally wouldn't have thought of it. But then eventually the thing is presented to you. You're like, actually, I like that. And that's how this shit spreads online. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the very few downsides of the Internet. If you want to call it a downside for those people, for us, it's just another lol cow to look at and laugh. But I'm sure the ancient Romans, none of them, you know, wanted to be a fucking non-binary trans furry who freezes his hands off in liquid nitrogen so he can waddle on all fours in the Roman Empire. Only our generation gets that sort of entertainment. So <laughs> enjoy it while it lasts. The internet is a great place. Absolutely. So speaking of this topic, Charlie, did you have a very special question you wanted to ask our guest? Which special question? The, oh, oh, just, the, just the question. One? Yeah, just the question you happen to ask every guest, you know. Yeah. Being a man of many tales, Justin, do you have any interesting masturbation stories? Interesting masturbation. See, the last time I got asked this question, I think it was when I was on. Was, I think it was when I was on the Dick Show, and I had to take way too fucking long to think of it because he asked me if I ever uh, did the cum jar myself, and I didn't remember <laughs> if I had or not. Actually, no, it wasn't me. Does it count of a master? If it, does it count as a masturbation story with someone else's hand? <laughs> that's called a hand job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can upgrade it. I, I you can, can upgrade it to a sex like, story if it's interesting. I don't think that counts. I don't yeah. think that counts. Well, yeah, yeah, like, to I have be a fair, funny story about I think that. it's disgusting to, you to even be fair, Lewis Spears, we're talking about masturbation. Lewis Spears came on the show and yeah. his sex. His story was about sex and it was very amusing. I'd say Justin could tell a sex story yeah, if it's amusing. Fine. All right. Yeah. yeah, we can fudge well, the rules. the council will let it slide. Yeah. Like, thinking about it, my favorite one... Well, my favorite story like this, it's not even... uh. I'm, I'm trying to think if I have a better one now, because now, like, now I'm thinking it through my head. It's like it's not that great of a story, but I guess yeah, all right. Okay. So I used to, yeah, Just tell I used story. to be on tour a lot, and the thing about like tour, like I don't really like you're you're around dudes constantly. Like you basically you're just on the road like living with four or five guys, and like I'm not someone that's gonna like sneak away and rub one out somewhere. So no, you get like a little build up, and uh, mm-hmm. and like you know how it is. Like when you get like that first. You haven't, like, jerked off for a while, and then all of a sudden you get the crazy, like, explosive, like, two, one mm-hmm. or two-week nut. Mm-hmm. So I met this girl in Canada, and, like, we, like when you're on tour, like, sometimes, like, you have places you can stay, or, like, people, like, let you crash their place. So we crashed at her place, and, like, I'm, like, laying down, like, we're on her mattress on the floor. Um, Her wall is behind me. And she gives me a hand job, and like the load was like so intense that like it like it sailed over my fucking head and like got on her fucking wall. And, and then <laughs> what she does is she like takes a shirt off the floor, wipes it off the wall, and then wipes me off with like the t-shirt that had been on her floor. And I'm like, damn, this is <laughs> this is that fucking tour <laughs> experience, I guess. You cum shotted yourself too? Huh? Yeah, I it didn't. I, I probably splattered a little, but like it wasn't like. Uh, an appreciable amount of it didn't get on me. Well, that's good. Yeah, because it, it, <laughs> so, so, 
Never good to wear your own brand. Yeah. So be honest with your uh, be honest with yourself, Justin. Yeah. Like be being truly honest. How many other loads were in that T-shirt already? Do you think? Oh, Jesus Christ! Ooh. I mean, there had been like, uh, there's a decent chance it was non-zero. There, mm. there, there might have been. Well, a, was she there might have been. A, was she a groupie? I, all right. So I had actually met her on um, back in the day. OK, Cupid used to have um, a uh, like a kind of like a location based status thing. People used it to like buy drugs all the time. So they, they got rid of it. But you could be like, hey, like I'm in the area and everyone in the area would see it. Um, mm-hmm. So I was actually in I think I was in Detroit at the time. But like we were going into Canada the next day and then we matched through there. So it was it came together pretty quickly. So but I don't really know if she had like a history in the area. Like she wasn't like a fan of the band or anything like that. Oh, that's probably yeah. good then. Not a groupie. Hmm. You know, I hadn't even considered the, the situation that I was like kind of touching other loads there as it got cleaned off. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I put that fear yeah. in your heart. Yeah. I'm, I mean, there were, like, a lot of shirts, too, so it could have... Could, that one could have been... She had a different <laughs> shirt for every yeah. load. <laughs> well, for each, she yeah. frames them now. Uh, she does... She makes her own merch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, that shirt sold on Etsy I mean, for $200. The custom shit's real hot right now, so... <laughs> Your cum is like it's just Pokemon. It's custom. It's her fucking Pokeball yeah. to capture the cum. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, she makes She's like a fucking uh, rang it uh, out made, later over a cup of coffee. <laughs> makes a fucking homunculus with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two years later, she comes up to you. It's like deformed midget. This is your son, Justin. Don't you remember when you'd come down the wall? <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! Oh. I was just like watching. Um, I went to go see Ari Shafir stand special. And he was talking at some point on it, like, about, uh, apparently there's, like, this Jewish idea that, like, every time you jerk off, a demon lady steals your sperm, and, like, then when you <laughs> die, you see all the demon babies you've created from jerking off in your life. Jesus. I don't, I don't know how accurate that was. That'd be a proud was, moment. But, uh, uh, supposedly that's a thing in the Jewish faith. That's, like, a secret thing. Hmm. A yeah. secret thing. <laughs> secret baby. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's not a fun, fun idea. So if you get an abortion, do they also, do you have to face those limbs? <laughs> those like they're torn probably, apart little babies. They're probably just walking around in like regular, in the regular heaven, not like the demon world. Uh, uh, they might not be, though. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, wait, why does your, why does your cum become a demon, but an abortion <laughs> becomes, it goes to heaven? First of all, and also when you come, <laughs> I'm there. angel. Isn't it a demon lady like, steals your they, sperm? Yeah, but in sperm, there's millions and millions of sperm cells, so you would have an entire yeah. army of demon babies. Yeah, you do. For every supposedly that, like, like nut you yeah. bust. No, no, no. For he's no, not saying like the collective nut. of this. No, 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 no. That's not what he's saying, Kai. The demon lady doesn't make an individual demon baby, baby from each sperm. It's uh, from one load. Yeah, so the cumulative load. total of the whole... Are you sure? I'm not sure. Okay. I don't remember yeah. the details if it was like every one became a demon baby or if it's like the demon ba- like the demon woman's like uh, cervix <laughs> and eggs works the same kind of way. I don't, I don't, yeah, like, I don't know her body <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Is she on our cycle? The demon cycle? Oh, wait, the, the demon lady shoves the cum up, up herself to birth the babies? No, the she's, like, you, she's there. You unclear. can't see her, but she's like taking it. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're, oh so you're, you're fucking, fucking oh, a demon while right. you're masturbating. Yeah. So oh, nothing that's is awesome. Ever I'm going to masturbate <laughs> more often now. <laughs> Yeah. It's rad as fuck. For her. Yeah, let's, Feed her. We'll, let's take turns at that bitch. Yeah, fuck yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah, double team her in the same room. room. I think he said that like every person like, gets their own specific one too. So it's like, <laughs> oh fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> well, wow, you have just improved this, masturbation for me exponentially. Hell yeah! I've, let's like, turn it into this. Think about this. The boys actually really hot. Actually, no, I was sitting there in the club hearing this and thinking it was kind of hot. But now that I'm talking to you guys about like this is really hot actually. Yeah. <laughs> this poor demon lady Does she get a choice in this? So I can just jerk yeah. off right now And she's gotta come here she doesn't oh, yeah, want it She's gonna make her want it <laughs> She's just like into demon guy. I, I can't take it anymore <laughs> <laughs> this 
Christian. Oh man, imagine being such oh. an insult that your Jewish demon God. come lady leaves <laughs> you. We, we really are in the fucking re- in the age of the internet because back in biblical times, if we had heard that, we probably would have been terrified and been like, "I'm never jacking yeah. off." No, but now in this day and age, we hear you're fucking a demon when you masturbate, and all of us are just like, "That's pretty hot." Fuck yeah, but you. again, oh. you know what it is. Again, it's the downside is. The downside is you can now, I'm sure, I bet, go on Reddit and find a sub-community that's really into that idea and jacks off to oh, it. Oh, man, there's a whole <laughs> thing about demons, Kaya, and let me tell you, the fact the new De- Doom game is coming out, I've seen some terrible artwork. <laughs> the the big, grotesque, disgusting demon monsters, you better believe they put pussies on those. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you it's, know what we're thinking, too? Like We're sitting better. here talking about the demon ladies. <laughs> yeah. And we're like thinking like these like hot like big titty devil girls with like little wings and horns and yeah, shit. Suck yeah. like oh yeah, they 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 definitely don't look like that. They oh, one hundred percent not. They definitely they mm. probably look like fucking Pizza the Hut or some shit. Yeah, they probably oh. look like a shitty like fat teacher or something. <laughs> <laughs> she still hot. What's the problem? Everyone's individual demon is just the ugliest female we've ever seen. Oh, oh. <laughs> now I don't want to do it. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's like you just, don't have to see them, so you can just imagine. You know, yeah, we you never know. see them. No, you see them yeah, when you fine. die, okay. though, I think. So, oh, shit. <laughs> so you find out. <laughs> oh, God. Well, it, it's too late to stop now. Yeah, kind I've of already like, put so yeah. many loads in her, I may as well keep going. <laughs> that is so much child support. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Beezlebub's not getting a break on my watch. I don't care what she looks like. So from now on, should we just come inside uh, a condom? That's kind of sweet. <laughs> Would that save us? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah what do they do about condoms? Yeah. I, I think, like, because, like, they're, they're ethereal, There's they can no just kind of go through it. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I don't know, though. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Well, what, a, you, what you about get, like, get the the, You have like so a rabbi bless your condom, so it doesn't it doesn't fucking go through. <laughs> <laughs> so Baptize according to it. them, then the only mythical force on earth that can stop that is a woman's vagina. Yeah, mm-hmm. Th- that's oddly weird and specific. <laughs> Anytime you, well, it could be. An, it, does it have to be a woman's vagina? It could what be, about like mouth and anus? Yeah, it could be literally <laughs> any hole. Yeah, what if I replicate a vagina out of like some fruit or something back in the Bible times? Am I safe? Actually, does this does this demon dig anal at all? Maybe maybe we can convince her to just take it up the ass so she doesn't have to keep spawning demons. Well, how babies? would you? You'd have to change your jerking off. Yeah, she, you like you like you like by, while you're oh, sitting you your other hand. Yeah, yeah and left handed. Off. Left-handed is anal for the demon. <laughs> You'd have to squeeze tighter and then occasionally squeeze extra tight to simulate the sphincter. Then maybe. Thing is, like we don't come know. Her like... ass. <laughs> what if I want to come on her face though? Then what do you do? <laughs> you ask nicely. <laughs> you well, no, no, no. You no, no, get so a <laughs> <laughs> Kaya, the, the law is that if you're fucking, if you're masturbating and not fucking a woman, you're fucking a demon. So if you're masturbating to the demon, you're actually fucking a second demon on a different dimension while that's going on. It just oh, keeps okay. getting deeper but and how deeper. How deep can it go? <laughs> that's, yeah, it's no like demon what, inception. You're fucking a demon. <laughs> how many babies can you put inside each of the demons? It's like those Russian nesting <laughs> dolls. <laughs> I like so, the Ouija board idea. <laughs> there's like just yeah. like a heaven squared where you meet all like there's all those like extra babies and like the, oh, like man. when you die in heaven you go to like see the other demon babies. You know what would be oh, fucked up? God. I just thought of this. Uh, you know, with all the multiverse theory, is there still multiple uh, heavens then for each dimension, or is there only one heaven, which would suck because I know I'm going to hell. Does that mean I have to look up and see an alternate version of myself in heaven? Like a better You wouldn't Kaya? see him. Yeah, you totally would. wouldn't yeah, see you, him. Of course I would. The it's whole idea it's with... hell. They would rub it in my face. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, the whole thing with multiverse theory is that we are just in the one universe. There are others, but this is ours. So right, but I guess do, do you we could, share when heaven? You go to hell. Yeah, if if I don't know. Does it work like wow? Maybe I would <laughs> find out. I would think there would just be the one. That's a really creative idea for like an anime. The exploring oh, fuck that you. idea. Yeah, like oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you weeb. 
<laughs> just saying, man. There's a, there's a lot of room to play with there. Yeah, we're, we're trying it. to talk about fucking demon pussy here, and Charlie brings up fucking anime. Typical. Yeah, that was way cooler. You can't stop yourself. Yeah. So should we uh, wrap up? You think? Uh, yeah, probably. We've been going for a little while. Yeah. Okie dokie. Uh, Justin, why don't you go ahead and shout out any of your stuff, any handles and links and this and that to anything you do? Yeah, um, YouTube channel is Wang, W-H-A-N-G. Uh, if you look up Wang or Tales from the Internet, it'll come up. Um, and then Twitter, Justin Wang. Instagram, Justin Wang YT. And everything else I have is like some variation of that. So well, we appreciate great. you coming on, man. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for having me. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure everyone's going to be stoked because they've been asking me so much for this. <laughs> I hope they fun, keep man. asking. Absolutely. Just yeah. out of spite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, get, I get people asking me to cover stories that I already make videos about, so I'm sure they get, like some amount of them are just not going to see this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wang's oh, audience, yeah. if you're listening to this episode, no matter what, <laughs> keep asking him to come on. No matter what. No matter how many times he does, <laughs> just keep asking that he comes on the show. Hell, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, thanks, right. man. I appreciate you coming on. Hell, yeah. Yes, that was fun. Yeah. It's always fun Take when we can out, talk Jackson. about demon babies. <laughs> yeah. And thank you, everyone at home, for listening. Uh, we appreciate you lending us your ears or whatever um patreon.com slash the official podcast if you want to listen to some bonuses what what was last night's bonus what did we record last night what do we talk about uh, uh, yeah well uh, well, none of us know so go find (laughs) go find out and tell us coronavirus (laughs) Uh, genocide uh, plane crashing a turkish avalanche it was yeah, yeah it was a very exciting podcast so go listen to it over at patreon.com slash the official podcast thank you for listening we'll see you next week thanks everyone bye bye